Welcome to MicroFocus Universe Breakout Session 4, Soaring Your SecOps Efficiently. So in order to begin, first let's take a step back and understand the challenges that security operations teams face. First of all, like everyone else, we're having to do more with less. In particular, looking at a, a shortage of cybersecurity experts in the workforce, totaling nearly 4 million by the end of 2021. Couple that with the tools that they're using don't necessarily work collaboratively and create inefficiencies on how they have to go about gathering the information in order to get to the decision on how to respond to the alerts they're getting. And those alerts are increasing in, on a daily basis uh, where analysts typically can see hundreds of alerts in a given day. That, that makes it very, you know, nearly insurmountable in order to respond accordingly and do the appropriate diligence that's necessary inside of each of these alerts. And the attacks that are coming in, while these volume is increasing with these inefficient tools, are much more rapid. They come in and come out of the enterprise very quickly, as well as, you know, they're being scripted and it creates a, a, you know, a perfect storm of challenges that the security operations has to face and overcome in order to provide the, the service to the organization. So now that we understand a few of the challenges faced by security operations, let's look at how the SOAR improves the operational efficiency of security operations. It does it in three key areas. First, eliminating false alerts, decreasing the workload on the analyst, removing those elements as we gather more information, whether it be through automated processes or reaching out to the individuals themselves, we can take those inputs and the more data that we're able to gain, we can make the better decision to move alerts out of the analyst queue that are identified as false positives. Likewise, within the alert queue, we have the ability to consolidate alerts into single incidents, reducing that workload significantly. In some instances, we've seen ArcSight soar to be able to reduce the alerts by upwards of 70 plus percent for one customer. And lastly, the capability of ArcSight soar to be able to take what amount to written processes that a new hire would have to be able to repeat as part of an investigation and response, fully automated workflows that are able to take those inputs, remediate, and respond accordingly without any human interaction, thus freeing the analyst from repetitive tasks and allowing them to focus on those incidents that require some level of human intellect in order to respond. So first, let's get acquainted with the interface, and then we'll get into the areas where these efficiencies are gained. First, we'll begin by logging into the application. So here we're presented with the logon. Upon entry, we are greeted by the Fusion dashboards. I hear, for example, we can see how the SOAR is running, various metrics that are pulled forward. We can, by default, look at seven days. We can go back in time, for example, looking at the last 30, where we can see things like the mean time to response, as well as the mean time to resolution, the playbooks, execution, case timelines, etc. And from there, when we click on respond, that takes us to the Microsoft SOAR, where we are presented with the incident management interface. So on the left, we have the incident queue area. Here's where an analyst will see what are the open incidents, all the incidents, which ones are assigned to them, uh, et cetera. In the center is the detail area uh, related to that actual incident. These, this, these items are scope items, which are extracted from the alerts themselves. As you can see down below here, we have the traffic to sus suspect country going on. Um, this is the correlated event that came over as an alert into the SOAR platform from our real-time correlation engine, uh, be that being ArcSight ESM. And, and as part of that, it extracted and retrieved the base events that went into this. Further down, we can see the full audit trail where I can look at the activities that have been associated. You can see this is executed a couple times where it's done some enrichments out to virus total, been able to come back and retrieve a score. And then on the right-hand side, I have some of the additional details related to the incident, such as the status, uh, the current severity, uh, any labels or meta tags that we want to have here, as well as the playbook history. We can see by the circles here 
but these are currently running uh, and waiting to execute, as well as uh, the ability to do some quick edits to the incident, take action, do enrichments, and we'll get into these in a little bit uh, shortly. And as part of these enrichments, as you can see below, uh, this has gone out as part of the virus total and retrieve a uh, confidence score. I uh, see this one is at 0%. And based on that, there's decisions that are made within the playbooks. Before we dive into the playbooks, first let's look at the incident queue here. On the left-hand side, we can see that there are a number of alerts that have come into the queue for the security operators to investigate look into, uh, see what's going on. In particular, uh, this one is assigned to the admin. We can see that there's a total number of 7,541 various alerts that make up this actual incident. Uh, this is part of the consolidation that's in place. And if the consolidation playbook that we're gonna go see in a second wasn't in place, this, is, this run had run over the course of uh, an eight hour shift and if we were to not have a consolidation playbook in place, you can see that over the course of 15 minutes, we had upwards of 33 various alerts come in um, that were associated to the same noisy behavior that normally uh, security operations would have to respond to all of those. Um, what the SOAR platform is able to do is to consolidate those into a single incident so that when we're triaging those events, um, sorry, those alerts, we can actually interact with just one of these uh, incidents at, within the queue and address the same volume of information that is coming in as part of the consolidation of the incidents, uh, streamlining those operations. Again, that is one of those key efficiency items that we mentioned earlier around alert triage and consolidation. So if we click on the playbooks, we're presented with all the various components of the playbooks. And we'll kind of go through these so we can understand how these efficiencies are gained. First and foremost, uh, we're presented with the playbooks themselves. And as you can see, there are a number of playbooks here within the environment. Uh, the one that we've been seeing in action so far is traffic to suspect country. As you can see here, it's the first playbook to execute. So as Alerts come in, they are processed in the order of the rank here, and as such, you know, operate based on the criteria that's defined within the workflow. So as you can see here, there are a number of elements that happen, and this is the workflow in its entirety. We can see it comes across here to a point where there's a decision. Based on the result, it's gonna take the different avenues. So real quickly, we'll look at what is going on. So from the beginning, we're looking specifically for where the rules line up to that traffic to suspect country. And we will first tag it as in progress. So when you recall back in the incident queue, all of those you saw were in progress because we know now that as part of the automation that's in place, playbooks are being executed the ticket, it's, or the, sorry, the incident itself is being worked on uh, in an automated fashion and as such routed to the particular queue for an, a security operator to interact with and either review, manually interact, or take some sort of action. Likewise, we, we do some quick checks out to virus total. This could be out to K-Force. It could be in, uh, in parallel where we could add one of those items into, into the workflow. So let's say, for example, we were to add an enrichment in here where we were to you know, go out, uh, let's say, to uh, IBM X-Force, for example. We'd be able to check the IP as well, and we could chain uh, a score together simply by stitching this together as part of the workflow. So we'll remove that real quick. But that's how easy it is in order to build these workflows. And again, we evaluate the, the confidence score coming back from virus total. And depending on the score, if it's equal to zero, we move through and, and change the, the incident or the alert uh, to a severity of low, and we move it to a false positive. And later we'll see where 
we can look at these um, as well uh, as far as cleaning these out of the queue. And if it is for, for some reason the confidence is larger, this is where we get into, we change the severity to urgent. Uh, this could be whatever status you chose. And as well, we're going to keep it to in progress and we're going to present the analyst with a decision. And specifically, we're going to ask the analyst, do you wish to block the IP on the firewall? That's a simple yes or no that they'll be able to respond to within the central pane associated to the details of the alert. And then from there, of course, you know, it'll take the appropriate action, which is then to close the actual um, incident if for some reason the analyst says no. The third option here is if there's a timeout. So if there's a timeout, how long do we want to give the analyst to, in order to respond? And if for some reason it reaches that threshold, then what is the default action in order for it to take? And very quite simply, again, it's just dragging and dropping in order to set these. So let me close this. And that is the playbook that we're kind of looking at in this regard. And this, this in and of itself is how the enrichments take place in an automated fashion. And again, you can see that there were manual steps that are interjected as part of the workflow. This hybrid approach allows you the flexibility where in the, in the event that you can't have full automation and there is human interaction that's needed as part of the process. So looking to the left here, we'll look at the consolidation playbooks. And it does exactly what it, what it states. It takes, takes alerts based on the criteria, as you can see where it's matching that traffic coming from the alert, where it's traffic to suspect country, from ESM, where this alert is generating from. And over the course of one day, from the first time an alert is seen, it will aggregate all those up into a single incident. So when we come back over to the incident queue, where we were looking at things earlier, you can see that as this refreshes, the top incident in the queue is the consolidated playbook, as we saw before, where there are 7,541 events rolled up into a single incident. So when we look across this, you can see in the inspection window, we we're able to see that there's a lot of data that came over a 12 hour period where there's lots of events that roll up into each segment of time. Here are all the individual alerts that were brought up and rolled up. You can see there's about 1,500 various pages of events that are in here as part of this single incident. And then all these other ones down below, when we saw the workflow where it had the different cues based on the confidence score, it was appropriately setting these based on the offender confidence score from virus total to high or urgent and taking the appropriate action, whether it be, for example, to block the IP on the panel S if it was asked upon the analyst in order to respond to. So that is where those efficiencies are gained from the combination of both playbooks and consolidation playbooks, where a security operator doesn't necessarily have to go through all the iterations uh, when they get inundated by some of these alerts that come in over the course of days that are very chatty. We can build very quickly and easily build consolidation playbooks to roll them up so we can uh, respond accordingly in a simplistic fashion and respond to one instead of 7,500. This frees up your analysts to do other activities. Again, that's part of the operational efficiencies that we're talking about within a security operation. Okay, so now that we've seen the consolidation, pulling those 7,000 individual alerts into a single incident for, for the analyst to respond, let's look at some of the other areas where we use the various elements along the way to streamline what the analysts do from a prioritization, queue management, et cetera. In particular, first we start with classifications. These are evaluations that happened within the alert processing and we can ap apply labels, for example, to these uh, incidents as part of the initiation. Uh, of the alert within the tool. For example, if we were to see uh, malicious in a field, a particular field or a, a string 
we can then tag it as malicious code. Likewise, we could do evaluations on the IP address, and based on that information, tag it in this in this instance, for example, as a SIP asset if we're dealing with uh, energy sector and those types of compliance. Next, we can look at triggers. Triggers are used to evaluate things within the overall, the entirety of the work uh, of the workflow for things that are happening. These could be a comment being added to an incident. It could be someone changes the severity. Uh, in this case, you know, if we see the SIP tag label is added to an incident, we can then make notification to a particular subgroup of users that are going to handle that information and route it to them in order to handle the incident. And then lastly, we can get into the schedule playbooks. These run on a schedule. As, it, as the name says, they're kind of like running on a cron. In fact, you can use cron syntax in order to define the schedule. But these are things that we could use, for example, to do extractions of where we could do case assignment based on a staffing schedule. We can do things such as cleaning out the, the queue for low severity events because in our operation, we may not respond to low security events. They don't necessarily have the priority, but we also don't want those to accumulate within the environment either. So what we do is an automated process, for example, to clear those out for those that we haven't been able to get to over a certain duration. For example, based on an SLA going to be reached uh, where we can then take that out and actually clear the queue so that as an analyst comes back into the incident queue, and in this case, you remember we started with 33, we can see now that the only the urgent ones are here, the low ones have been removed, we only have 14 in the queue, and effectively removing 19 of those from our operations team having to respond to. Again, these are the areas where we're talking about the efficiencies and making sure that the analyst has all the information up front, able to make the decisions in a quick and orderly fashion, repeatable fashion, and prioritizing the queues uh, so that they don't have to necessarily respond to each and every item that is being flooded into the environment within the con using consolidations, as cleanups, et cetera, in order to drive efficient operations. So to recap, we've gone through all the features around playbooks and how it addresses these three key tenants around gaining efficiencies within your operations from the ArcSight SOAR platform. Eliminating false alerts by incorporating those workflows, those data elements, and allowing the tool to eliminate those from the alert queue, which then drives the alert triage and consolidation, being able to collapse those and prioritize what the security operator has to actually respond to in conjunction with streamlining the investigation and response process by putting the information that the operator needs to actually make the decision, whether it be interactive or if there's a reach out that they need to incorporate as part of that response, they're able to do so in a quick and efficient manner, allowing the tool to provide the ability to cover those repetitive tasks, freeing up your security operators to prioritize and get into the incidents that actually need their involvement in order to resolve. Thank you for your time, and this concludes soaring your SecOps efficiently.